Welcome to an artificial new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. Life often comes at us fast, and second chances are pretty rare, and I think it's important to take in as much as we can during our time on this planet. So, hold on to your scarves and cool your jets, because today, we're talking about Nuja. Nuja, or Nataishi as he's often referred to in Megami Tensei, is a prominent figure in Chinese folklore, and the central character in many different tales and stories, including appearing in the famous Journey to the West, but that's not the tale I'll be focusing on today. Also, like any time I talk about Chinese characters, I do apologize for how badly I butcher some of these pronunciations. Nijia's mother was pregnant with him for about three and a half years, and when she finally did give birth to him, he came out as a ball of flesh. Nijia's father, a military commander, believed that his wife had given birth to a demon and struck the flesh ball with his sword, causing it to split open, where a young Nijia was already fully formed and capable of things like walking and talking. While playing near the ocean, Nijia met a young dragon named Ao Bing. The two became fast friends and started to play, but Nijia, unaware of his own strength, ended up accidentally killing his new friend. Unfortunately for Nijia, as well as everybody else, Ao Bing's father was Ao Guang, a powerful dragon king who demanded retribution for his son's murder, and began a reign that would flood the entire world. To atone for what he'd done, Nijia agreed to kill himself and the reign stopped. He was eventually brought back to life by his teacher, the immortal Taiyi Jenren, who had constructed an artificial body for his young pupil out of lotus roots. Once reborn, Taiyi gifted Nijia with a fire-tipped spear as well as his iconic fire wheels that allowed him to travel great distances quite quickly. Nijia went to kill his father for being sort of a dick to him his entire life and even after his death, but was talked out of it by two wise Buddhas. And that's why the moral of the story is don't disrespect your parents. Nijia's tale has been told and retold throughout history and has been adapted into multiple TV shows and animated films. His stories have had several variations, and the character remains one of the most iconic and famous in Chinese folklore. Nijia's compendium entry from Persona 3, where he's known as Nadataishi, refers to him as a deity of Chinese mythology, also known as Zhongtan Yuanshai. He committed suicide to atone for killing a dragon king, but was brought back to life as a lotus. Design-wise, Nijia has had two major designs that both incorporate the idea of his artificial body in vastly different but easily recognizable ways. His original Shin Megami Tensei design went with a Frankenstein's monster motif that really didn't capture many aspects of Nijia's mythology. But his Devil Summoner design absolutely knocked it out of the park, taking obvious inspiration from Osamu Tezuka's classic manga character, Astro Boy. But of course, Kaneko was able to keep many more elements from Nijia himself in this design, with his flaming wheels, his long red scarf, the ring around his wrists, and the obvious lotus motif, including having the kanji for lotus featured on his chest. While I don't dislike either design, it's pretty obvious why the Devil Summoner one became the more commonly used design. I think the Frankenstein motif would have worked a little bit better if it had fit more into the story of Nijia himself. Though I'm curious if the giant scar in his head is a reference to him being born from the ball of flesh being split open. As far as game history goes, Nijia has never really appeared in the main storyline of any game, but does pop up frequently enough in side quests to have made his own unique marks on the franchise. For example, in Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzunoha vs. King Abaddon, which is the only game to use a 3D model of his Frankenstein design as of the time of making this video, has Nijia featured prominently in the case file Demons for Science 2. Victor tells Raido, I need to study the physiology of a certain demon in order to realize my dream of creating an artificial life form. The one I'm looking for is a soulless demon created in the Asias. Since Victor doesn't ask for the demon by name, this does require at least some basic knowledge of Nijia's mythology, but once you've got one, you simply hand it over to Victor in exchange for two opals. Another side quest Nijia is featured in comes from Persona 3, only this time Nijia isn't required for the quest, but is the reward for completing it. One of Elizabeth's fusion requests is to create an Omitsunu above level 33. Completing this task will reward players with the Machine Core item, which will allow Makoto to fuse Nadataishi. Nijia also appears in Persona 2 Eternal Punishment as a rare encounter in Alba Park, where he's simply known as Nata. 
What's peculiar about this one is that while Najah appeared in his more traditional design in Innocent Sin, Eternal Punishment seems to showcase a slightly older version of the titular hero. After defeating him in the park, Maya will earn his Palpe Material Card, which directly references his flame wheels, and he can be summoned in the Velvet Room. And lastly, Najah himself might not make an appearance in Tokyo Mirage Session Sharp FE, but one of his most iconic weapons definitely does. One of the lances that can be wielded by Toma Akagi is known as the Huojinxiang, or Fire Tip Spear. True to its name, this weapon teaches Toma a variety of fire-based abilities. It's pretty interesting that this game acknowledges Najah through his trademark weapon, when none of his actual demonic appearances acknowledge the spear at all. While not the most prominent demon, Nijah has managed to leave an impression through his vastly different but equally distinct designs, his minor side quest roles, and those flaming wheels that really do look like they'd just be super fun to skate around on. And so there you have it, Nijah, the little lifeless lotus lad lively leaping on lit legs. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.